Welcome to the Chapman Gallery. This beautiful gallery space is dedicated to showcasing the University of Hertfordshire art collection. Occupying the former main reception, the architecture bears witness to the institution's incredible evolution. For over 60 years, this was the gateway into Hatfield Technical College, then Hatfield Polytechnic, and finally the University of Hertfordshire. This digital tour of the gallery introduces 20 key pieces of the university's art collection. The composition in this painting evokes feelings of displacement and alienation, presenting Lima as an empty city with an absence of people, at odds with the romantic notions of holiday destinations presented in travel guides. Silhouettes in this painting suggest conventional still-life objects such as jugs, bottles and vases, but the focus is more on their formal qualities and composition. Nicholson spent time in Castagnola in southern Switzerland, which perhaps influenced the choice of palette and tableware. This piece explores the relation of man-made observatories and celestial space. Photographed from extraordinary viewpoints, the artist creates large cutouts which are half real, half artificial, like a gateway into make-believe worlds. The Oracle is one of the five founding works of the collection, commissioned in 1952 by Hertfordshire County Council for this very space. Butler spent time in Hatfield, watching the planes from the de Havilland Aircraft Company flying overhead. This perhaps influenced his use of form and the spirit within this sculpture. Alan Davy invented and adopted symbols from diverse cultures and combined these elements with private totems to create his own unique and distinctive visual language, allowing the viewer to read and digest the work in their own way. Ashantra uses rock-making processes to create her large woolen hand-tufted works. Often taking the form of masks or animal skins, her works are suggestive of objects found in anthropological museums, removed from their original context. Brendan Kelly's painting is a portrait of Professor Neil Buxton, who was the university's first vice-chancellor from 1992 to 2003, during a period of unprecedented expansion in higher education. Kelly's second painting is of Sir Tim Wilson, who served as vice-chancellor from 2003 till 2010, during which the university transformed itself from a small polytechnic to a large institution with a strong international presence. This work was produced during a period when Maynard Smith painted surrealist landscapes. It depicts a coastal scene under a clear, cool sky, with scaled-up seats and pots occupying the foreground. These two photorealist works continue Paris's travel painting series, capturing the taillight of a bike and the intriguing part-obscured view from a window. Rather than producing large format photographs, the artist manipulates the images by translating them into paint. Bruce McLean initially gained notoriety for his performances which were satirical in nature and usually directed against the art world. When his practice moved towards painting, the props from his performances were carried through. Philip King is an artist of international standing who is largely known for his sculptural work. Unsurprisingly, these two works held in our collection are also sculptural in composition and handling. They present strong, dynamic abstract forms created with visible gestural marks. This work, although at first looks like an abstract image, does in fact represent a mask and demonstrates the artist's preoccupation with anthropological artefacts. Channel S was made during Ashantra's residency with UH Arts. Combining ceramic with faux leather, it is yet another nod to the artist's deep interest in tribal cultures. Stanley Spencer is recognised as one of the most important British painters of the 20th century. This print is taken from an original self-portrait drawing, which presents the artist at 23, his features densely defined with close crossed hatch strokes. Exploring traditional entomological collections through three-dimensional embroidery, these felt spheres suggest mothballs. The group depicted here are all pretty specimens, each meticulously crafted, pinned and classified with a handwritten label. This work raises awareness about the world's most endangered species. 
Each illustration has a translucent quality and subtly reveals more or less of the creature's skeleton, depending on how threatened the species is. This work invites us to consider discarded and functionless objects. The artist mends her curious finds with copper, casts and wire, extending the life and forming new interpretations of the objects. Thank you for joining us on this digital tour of the Chapman Gallery. These 20 pieces are some of the key works in the university's collection that comprises over 500 artworks. Please visit our website for more information.